What's up guys? Welcome back to the Dapper Side. Today we're going to be talking to you about some traditional Oxfords. Now coming out of COVID, some of you are starting to go back to work. Maybe some of you have switched jobs in a new role and you're going to need a more traditional type of dress shoe in a lot of these settings. So we're going to show you a couple of examples as well as a couple of colors that you can choose them with. Now we've mentioned it before, but just to reiterate, an Oxford can be defined as a shoe with a closed face lacing system. Now you can see here on the quarters, the vamp has this stitch going through it, and it kind of gives the shoe this V shape. This is the more traditional and more formal style of dress shoe. The other one is gonna be your derby style. On this one, you can see that there's two open flaps right here, and it's an open face lacing system. Now for this video, we're gonna to stick to your more traditional types of Oxfords. We're also gonna rank them in formality. Now the first thing to consider when it comes down to formality is gonna be color. Color is most important when dressing up a shoe. Now black is always gonna be your most common, your most formal style. It's gonna go in the most conservative of occasions. Another good color that you wanna have in your rotation is gonna be something in a burgundy. It's incredibly versatile and you can really kind of dress it up. Uh, you can even dress it down a little bit as well. Uh, in general, after that, people like to go with a shade of brown. Now, the chili-ish type of color is going to be very versatile, whereas the most casual color out of these is going to be the tan color. It's much lighter. You can still dress it up, but it does look much better than the rest of these dressed down. As far as the most traditional, it's going to be your cap toe Oxford. Now, the history of this shoe is that it was first found in the early 1800s at Oxford University, where they were called Oxonians. In terms of today, it's the most conservative dress style. It's going to be worn in your more sartorial looks and your more formal occasions. As far as color, you can see a brown like this is going to be very versatile and it kind of goes with everything. Now that you've seen the most conservative style, we're going to go ahead and introduce you to the world of brogues. Now, brogues first came about in the early 1900s in Scotland and Ireland, where people, the common working class that traveled or worked throughout the countryside, wore them. Now, the typical brogue can be defined as any sort of perforation within the leather on the shoe. In the early 1900s in Scotland and Ireland, the perforation actually worked as a drainage system to get the water out of the shoe so it didn't just sink straight into the leather. Fast forward to the early 1900s and it becomes very popular in America. You start to see two-tone brogues in the early 1920s, which was a classic staple for any sort of formal wear. Now, sticking to the most traditional styles of brogues, the first one of these that we're going to show you is going to be the quarter brogue. Now, the quarter brogue can be identified by the same type of cap toe you see on the most formal one, but it has this slight line of perforations that go through it. It's not quite as conservative as the cap toe, but if you work in a conservative business environment and you don't like the plain cap, the small bit of perforation gives you a bit of versatility. Again, in this type of conservative environment, you can even wear it with slacks and different colored jackets. It's going to go well with that. Now the next brogue that we're going to show you is going to be the semi-brogue, also known as the half-brogue. It was invented by John Lobb in 1937. It can be identified by the same type of cap that you saw with the quarter brogue, but it also has the perforation in the center. This design is commonly known as a medallion. Now this is a staple in business casual environment. You can really do a lot with this type of shoe in terms of if you're going to wear it with jeans, if you're going to even wear it with like slacks. If you do work in a more conservative environment, in today's fashion, people are wearing these shoes with any types of suits. You just have to remember it has to be with the right type of color of suit and tie depending on what situation you want to wear it for. Now the final brogue that we're going to show you is going to be the least formal out of the other ones that we've shown you. It's known as the full brogue or most commonly known as the wingtip. It can be easily identified by this wing shape right here at the front of the shoe and you can also see that it has the medallion on it as well just like the semi brogue. Now they're the least formal just because it has the most amount of perforation on them. Uh, but it still can be worn with a suit. In very conservative environments, you typically do see a black wingtip. Now, the other thing about wingtips that's interesting is the versatility of them. You can easily dress this down with jeans, or if you're in a semi-casual or business-casual environment, it works fine just the same. 
Now, like I was saying, in the 1920s, when the wingtips really became popular in the US, the most common style was gonna be a two-tone wingtip. You can see it's a very elegant style, and you can see this tan and white combination is gonna go well with a lot of options. Now, back then, it was very formal. Today, you still see some people wearing them, but really not as often, and typically when they do, it's a cheaper quality brand. The one that I have here is gonna be the Broad Street from Allen Edwards, a much higher quality brand, and you can see it's just an elegant style wingtip. Now in today's fashion environment, you're always gonna see a lot of different dress shoes, but these are really your staples. They're the ones that you're constantly gonna hear never go out of style and the themes around them are always gonna be consistent as well. Your plain cap toe is gonna to be most formal always. After that, the quarter brogues are versatile, they're still conservative, but you can kind of do a little bit more with it. And then you have your semi and full brogues. Now styles like these are always gonna remain the least conservative, but again, the way people dress nowadays, all of these options are gonna work in however you're gonna wear them. Color-wise, most of the themes remain consistent as well. Black's always gonna be the most formal. Your browns kinda go with everything. And then the lighter color is always gonna be the most casual, but you still see people dress it up as well. Thanks for tuning back in, guys. Feel free to like and subscribe, it helps us out. We have a lot of new upcoming content coming out and we've decided that once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we're gonna go ahead and raffle off a high-end leather bag. So feel free to subscribe, stay tuned for what we're doing, and leave a comment as well if you would like. You know, let us know what you think. Are there any styles of dress shoes that you personally like? Any styles of brogues or oxfords that you also think are staples and that should be mentioned as well? Thanks for tuning in, and remember guys, stay dapper.